Steven Crowder is an American Canadian political commentator and media host and a Christian. He made a couple of videos and statements against Islam. Today we're reacting to this video. Steven Crowder is Islam even. Let's watch the clips and come back. Not all followers, not all Muslims, but Muhammad and the founding uh, teachings of it. Yeah, you know what? I'll say you wicked and evil. I, I would agree. And here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. All yeah. practicing Christians have to believe that what Muhammad specifically, and some writings in Hadith, espoused are wicked and evil. Bear in mind that he has no problem believing that the prophets of God commit sins and all kinds of evil. He believes that Lot, peace be upon him, slept with his two daughters and got them pregnant. Genesis 19 verse 36. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. And because he believes Jesus is God, he has no problem with the fact that his lovely Jesus commanded the killing of babies and infants. 1 Samuel 15 verse 3. No go at attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Jesus according to Christianity was a genocidal maniac and they dare to call our beloved prophet Muhammad peace be upon him even. Astaghfirullah. It is narrated by Ibn Umar that a woman was found killed in one of these battles. So the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade the killing of women and children. They believe it's morally okay to kill babies and infants. Infants. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him forbade the killing of women and children. So who are the objectively evil ones? It's the Christians, the baby killing apologists. Let me explain to you why, okay? So let's get to um, obviously the idea that the Bible warns against false prophets. Mm -hmm. Right. I think I have a verse I don't want to read it right. Galatians 1, 8, 9. If you want to actually go fact check this and go read the verse, that's great. Um, they warn against false prophets, especially mm -hmm. anyone who preaches uh, teachings that supersede what is written in the Bible from right. Genesis to Revelation. So in right. other words, if these teachings say, no, 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 erase what happened there, we're changing the rules, that is considered biblically evil. Really? So changing the laws is evil? Did he just admit that Paul in the Bible is evil? Jesus, peace be upon him, in the Bible clearly called his followers to keep the commandments. Matthew 5 verse 17 to 18. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until the heavens and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So according to Jesus, peace be upon him, not a single iota of the law should be changed and Christians should follow the laws of God. That's why James, the brother of Jesus, according to the Bible, said this. James 2 verse 24. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. But Paul comes along and flips everything and contradicts James. Romans 3 verse 28. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. You need to solve this contradiction and choose which one of these people is the evil one because he's trying to change the laws of God. And Christianity came after Judaism. According to Stephen Crowder, the Jews are justified to reject Jesus, peace be upon him, because he came with a new scripture. You stupid. Yeah. So. It's very clear, right? Does it, and that's where we've talked about other cults. They do that, right? They take yeah. the Bible and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They twist it. Yep. And they yeah. twist it and they add to it. Did Muhammad do that? Now, I'm not saying all Muslims. I want to be clear. I'm talking about these teachings from a Christian ideology from a theological standpoint. Abraham. This is a big one. Abraham, you know, he went up to the uh, went up to the mountain, had his son, and Argh! he was like, no, and he was like, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> JK. Yes. 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 April Fool's. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Again, no respect for God or the prophet of God, Abraham, peace be upon him, the friend of God. They think it's a joke. And if you ask them, they will surely say, we were only conversing and playing. Say, it is Allah and his verses and his messenger that you were mocking. Make no excuse. You have disbelieved after your fate. If we pardon one fraction of you, we will punish another fraction because they were criminals. Talking about Abraham, peace be upon him. Did Abraham, peace be upon him, ever preach the Trinity? Did Abraham, peace be upon him, believe that God died for his sins? Or that a human being can be God? Abraham, peace be upon him, has nothing to do with you or your religion. No. But they are actually, Muslims actually, a big part of this is they say that Ishmael, or so they, they don't believe that it was Isaac mm -mm. who was one up to mm -hmm. be sacrificed. No, he was. Yeah. Now they believe that the texts were perverted and distorted by scribes. In other words, everything after Abraham, Those you see scribes. this with Muhammad, everything after <laughs> Abraham before Muhammad is not really reliable. And by the way, everyone no. who was kind of Jewy. Yeah. So that's an issue people need <laughs> to understand. Scribe is a dog whistle in that case. Yeah. Scribe yeah. is a dog yeah. whistle in that case. Yeah. Yeah. And does that not kind of give you an idea as to where maybe some of the anti-Semitism, which has arisen um, in the Islamic world for the most part, 
always where it comes <laughs> from everywhere. if you believe that the Jews and the Christians lied or w twisted, warped everything past the sacrifice, uh, the non-sacrifice of Abraham and yeah. the blessing of the first yeah. child. Did he say the sacrifice of Abraham, peace be upon him, and the blessing of his first child? This is how ignorant this person is. The first child of Abraham, peace be upon him, is Ishmael, peace be upon him, and not Isaac, peace be upon him. Genesis 16 verse 11. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant, and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. So Ishmael, peace be upon him, because he was born before Isaac, peace be upon him, was the only child of Abraham, peace be upon him. Do we all agree? Okay, so let's read the verse about the sacrifice. Genesis 22 verse 2. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a branch offering on a mountain I will show you. Isaac is not the only son of Abraham, peace be upon him. He can never be the only son because he's the younger son. And Ishmael, peace be upon him, is the oldest son. And this proves that either the Bible is corrupted or it got the name wrong. Or that the Bible writers were racist against the Gentiles. So they changed the name from Ishmael, peace be upon him, to Isaac, peace be upon him. Because the verse does doesn't make any sense calling Isaac peace be upon him the only son when Ishmael peace be upon him is the oldest son. But either way the Bible has many historical mistakes. Like for example the title of the ruler of Egypt at the time of Joseph peace be upon him. The Bible calls him Pharaoh which is historically incorrect and an embarrassing mistake in the Bible. Because according to ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics the word Pharaoh came from the word Pera which literally mean great house a description of the royal palace. And historically the title title Pharaoh was only used to describe the ruler at the time of the new kingdom, which was way later than the period of Abraham and Joseph, peace be upon them both, were alive in. Genesis 41 verse 14. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, when he was quickly brought from the dungeon, when he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. This verse is wrong historically because the title Pharaoh didn't exist at the time of Joseph, peace be upon him. That's why the Quran, the true word of God, got it right. And the king said, Bring him to me. But when the messenger came to him, Joseph said, Return to your master and ask him, What is the case of the woman who cut their hands? Indeed, my Lord is knowing of their plan. That's why the Bible is not a reliable source of information when it comes to history. It's a text full of mistakes. I invite everybody to pick up a copy of the Quran and compare it with the Bible. And you'll see the difference between true monotheism and polytheism. About anti-Semitism, let's have a Jewish rabbi answer for himself. Why is it so anti-Jewish? Why? Because they have to, Christians, early Christians, as well as late modern Christians, have to explain away a major conundrum. Why don't the Jews believe in Jesus? I have spoken to many Christian leaders in my life. When I ask them, what is the question that comes up most frequently? One of them is, why don't the Jews believe in Christ? So you have to therefore explain that the Jews are blinded, that the Jews are evil, that the Jews can't never can see their salvation. They can they never could figure out their own book. They always turn their back on God. And that's the same idea that fuels that fuel the epistle of Barnabas. The Jews never understood their own book. That's what's really going on. The Jews never understood it, and moreover, they're enemies of God. I made multiple videos proving time and time again that the Bible is corrupted and nobody can disprove my claims. And Christian scholars know that. And in academia, it's a consensus that the Bible is corrupted. Only Christian YouTube content creators still believe that the Bible is 100% reliable. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everything in the Bible is wrong. But what I'm saying is that we don't know for sure what's reliable and what's not. You can watch this video about Sam Shimon trying to prove the Trinity but fails miserably. Don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.